Some of the experiences that um, really inspired me to write this work and to um, you know, really take the direction that it did was, it, it's coming out of Indigenous communities. Uh, the communities that I worked with, the knowledge holders, the elders, community members, um, they really inspired the direction of the book. Um, that Indigenous knowledge, that Indigenous brilliance um, is really at the fore throughout the book and it's, it's their knowledge, it's the communities I worked with, it's the elders I worked with, even the Indigenous youth that I was able to work with. Being able to see their kind of words at the fore throughout the, the work means a great deal to me and it had a, a tremendous influence on me throughout. So um, it's, it's the brilliance coming out of Indigenous communities. I was just so fortunate to be able to compile their brilliance and their words and um, all of their work and their stories uh, and compile those things to create, create a story out of it about the history of lacrosse in Canada. For me, the relevance of the, the subject right now is looking at the history of settler colonialism, but not only the history of settler colonialism within Canada, as Canada attempts to kind of confront this and uh, make significant changes in its relations with Indigenous peoples, but also looking at the strength of Indigenous nationhood throughout the history of that history of Canadian colonialism. So what I hope to see or what I hope comes out of this is that an Indigenous youth picks this up and they're seeing themselves reflected in it uh, as Indigenous scholars seeing themselves reflected in it to, to be able to read those words and then be inspired, be angered, whatever it might be to do it better. I know that they can, I know that they will. Um, so I hope that this kind of leads uh, future Indigenous scholars and Indigenous students uh, to be able to write their own stories and to, to have the confidence to be able to put those words on paper or on stage or in front of a microphone or in their music or whatever it might be. It's something that caught me by surprise throughout my research of the history of lacrosse and the history of Indigenous nationhood and of Canadian settler colonialism was actually uh, the relevance and the importance of lacrosse to Indigenous nationhood, that it's always been a constant actor, a vehicle for Indigenous communities to um, revitalize their languages, their culture, their ceremonies, their governance, uh, their gender relations. Also, uh, it's been kind of part and parcel to the history of Indigenous nationhood uh, during this period, which is 1860 to 1990 for the book. Um, so looking at the game of lacrosse as a vehicle to kind of articulate indigenous nationhood identity formation um, and also a, a history of settler colonialism within Canada. So what I hope that the book uh, can do in the future is just to inspire indigenous youth to do it better, to write it better, um, to share their stories. Another thing that I hope might come out of this or contribute to in some small way is actually an intellectual uh, indigenous sovereignty of history. So that is indigenous history on its own terms, not related to Canadian history or US history, but to say that indigenous history can stand on its own, that there is an intellectual sovereignty that can exist within Indigenous scholarship, that we can tell our stories that not only relate to relationships with the nation state of Canada or the United States, but that we have our own unique stories and histories that should be told. There are so many incredible senior Indigenous scholars that have been doing this, like Kim Anderson, Mayor Jay McCallum, uh, Robert, Rob Innes, and they've been doing this for quite a while now and I've just been inspired by them uh, to tell these stories, to continue the work that they started. And I hope that there are their future Indigenous students out there uh, and community members that will continue to tell their stories that can continue to contribute uh, to this Indigenous kind of intellectual sovereignty. Well, I hope to continue in my research to examine the history of Indigenous nation and sovereignty and self-determination. Um, I'm now turning to a new project looking at the history of Indigenous ironworkers in New York City um, and how working in that industry actually became an articulation of their self-determination, of their identities and of their sovereignty. So the, the response to the book has been overwhelming. I really um, am grateful for that and I appreciate that, but ultimately the, I'm just so happy and thrilled to see the Indigenous communities that I worked with get there. They're getting their moment um, there to, for people to read their words, to see their work, to see their brilliance. That is at the fore throughout the book. They are the ones 
Uh, all those indigenous knowledge holders and elders and community members, they are the ones that made this book happen. Um, it's their brilliance that's contained within it. And so I'm just so thrilled to see that, that that's getting the recognition that it really, it should. Um, and it's no reflection of anything that I've done, but rather um, all of the work that they put into it. Thank you.